Hello everyone, I'm Carrie Daly, Marketing Specialist with Atlantis Computing. Thank you for joining our webinar today. Today's focus is Virtualized NetApp with Confidence, presented by Mark Niedemeyer, uh, Head of VDI Products with Atlantis Computing. Before I begin, I would like to mention that if you have any questions, please type them in the questions box on the right side of your screen and I will direct them to the speaker at the end of the presentation. This session is also being recorded and the recording will be sent out on Monday. Now, here's Mark Niedemeyer. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Mark Niedemeyer. I'm the Director of Product, uh, Product Management of Advanced Computing and I'm responsible for the development and strategy of Advantis Ilio for virtual desktops and Zen app workloads. As most of you probably know, desktop and application virtualization solutions, such as Microsoft Remote Desktop Services and Citrix Zen App, are used by thousands of companies worldwide to provide remote access to line of business applications and desktops from anywhere in the world and from any device. Just like Windows XP running out of uh, running into its end of life date just yesterday, all software products eventually will become outdated and need to be upgraded to newer versions. And almost always, this migration to a newer version comes with the need for more resources, newer and bigger servers, and more storage, which in turn increases your budget for the year. The migration comes with the risk for your for your uh, this migration comes with the risk for your IT organization, both from a technical as well as a business perspective. I'm going to talk today about how to virtualize your Citrix Zenas deployment with confidence, how to make sure you lower your deployment risks and at the same time how you can boost your Xena storage capacity and performance. So to deploy a uh, Xena uh, project uh, very successfully, it really depends on making everybody happy, right? It is making your users happy. They want to uh, be able to use their applications, their data, their desktop, their, their work environment uh, from any, any place in the world, wherever they are at that point in time. Right? They want fast logins. They want to be able to get through their work quickly without uh, waiting for minutes and minutes, uh, waiting for the Xena session or Microsoft RDP session to load. Uh, they want applications that respond really fast, really quickly, and are, are, uh, are pleasant to use. They don't want session freezes that uh, requires them to log back in, restart their computer, and things like that. Your IT organization needs to be happy as well. They need to have a very simple way of migrating their Zenap deployments from a maybe a physical uh, deployment that they're using today to a newer version of Zenap, which probably is going to be virtualized. Right? They they are running into end of life dates, just like Windows XP that I mentioned uh, for older versions of Zenap that requires them to upgrade to maybe a Zenapp 6.5, maybe a 7, or maybe even a Zenapp 7.5 that just was uh, announced by, by Citrix the other week. Right? And this, this in turn requires an upgrade to a newer version of the Windows Server platform. They also need flexibility of infrastructure. They want to be able to use any server uh, that they, at that point in time, can, can purchase. They don't want to be tied to a specific kind of server, to a specific brand of server, or even storage. The CFO needs to be happy as well. He is very concerned about the capex costs that um, that are that are associated uh, with your um, Zen app project. Right? Companies keep keep on growing. You keep on having more uh, employees, so the capex costs uh, keep rising, keep increasing over time. Uh, outside of the capex cost, there is the the opex cost as well, right? Any server, any application, any storage so solution need management, so there is cost associated with those as well. And the last thing that a CFO needs to uh, needs to be able to deal with are the surprise costs that happen sometimes when you're running into issues uh, during a migration or during the management of a project, things you have not budgeted for, things you have not anticipated. So in short, you need to make everybody happy, users, your IT organization, as well as your executive management. A um, lot of existing Zenit deployments, whether they are uh, virtual or physical, have run into or are running into an end-of-life situation. Right? Older versions of Zenit and even uh, presentation server, Citrix presentation server, 
have run into an end-of-life situation last year already at the end of March, and you can buy extended support through uh, the middle of next year, which is very expensive. So a lot of companies that have an existing uh, Zenab deployments are in the process of or are planning to um, uh, migrate to a newer version of Zenab relatively soon. As part of that um, uh, migration, a lot of companies are choosing to virtualize their Zenab environment at the same time. Right? A lot of the um, new software deployments are virtualized already, so why not virtualize Zenab at the same time? Um, one of the side effects of moving to a newer version of Zenab that causes a, the requirement to use a newer version of Windows Server, like Windows Server 2012 or 2012 R2, is that it requires more storage performance as well as capacity uh, when you, as, as compared to your physical environment. The physical environment is, is typically very well managed, it's very well sized and so on, but at the moment you virtualize and at the moment you move to a newer uh, version of your OS, you need more storage, both in terms of 60, going to a 64-bit environment with, with larger binaries, with larger applications, with more storage requirements, as well as storage performance in terms of IOPS. Typically, a Windows 2008 or a 2012 environment requires to double the amount of storage performance in terms of IOPS than your older Windows Server 2012, uh, 2003 environment. So that's that's. That, that is one of the reasons why you cannot, you probably cannot use your existing storage infrastructure when you migrate to a newer version of, uh, of Zenab. But why would you virtualize Zenab? There's a, there's a few very good reasons why you would uh, virtualize your Zenab as part of your migration project. Um, my dear colleague Andy Woods has written an excellent blog that you can find at uh, the bit.ly you can see on the, on the right hand side of the screen over there. And I've stolen some of, uh, of the content uh, from his blog to talk to you today. So the number one reason why you would virtualize Zenab is that you uh, get the benefit of hardware abstraction. Right? Many Zenab farms, they grow over time, whether it's due to acquisitions or um, getting more employees, growing the business and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. Over time, you will need to grow your Zenab environment. You will need to purchase more servers and, um, and basically grow your, your environments on those new servers. So it's not uncommon to have a range of server hardware that is different from generation to generation. Maybe newer processors, maybe newer motherboards. All of these servers, all of these images that you need to maintain in a physical world, basically you have to maintain them on a one-to-one -one basis. Right? Um, server A will need different drivers than server B. Um, you will um, need to patch those images in, in different ways. So in short, you need to maintain a lot of different images. With with virtualization, you basically have the benefit of abstracting away those hardware changes, those hardware differences. You only need to maintain one single server image, so there's going to be less changes, there's less management, less patching cycles, so there's less risk in things breaking, and, there's, uh, and associated with that, there's less operational cost. Also, there are use cases that need uh, virtualization. A very good example of that is um, the um, assisted hardware accelerated graphics with the NVIDIA grid cards. The NVIDIA grid cards are only supported in a virtual environment. They don't support using the grid cards on, uh, on bare metal installs of Zenap. So a very good reason to go virtualized on your, on your Zenap deployment. Availability is a very important reason as well. Right? If a physical server fails or is starting to fail, your user sessions will disconnect. Yes, you can reconnect to and, and get a different session on a different physical server, but it's still an interruption in, in working, an interruption in access to your data, your uh, applications, et cetera, et cetera. With virtualization, you can detect that a physical machine will start to fail relatively soon um, due to all the advanced hardware monitoring capabilities today. So you can move, you can proactively move a uh, Zenap virtual machine to a different host. Um, without having to uh, disconnect the servers and so on. People can continue to use their applications and uh, the, the, your, basically your application workload is not, is not interrupted. The other benefit of um, virtualizing Zenab is that you can have a smaller, that you can introduce a smaller failure domain. By having multiple Zenab virtual machines on a, on a single physical server, 
you can reduce the number of numbers in a of a particular Zainab instance, right? Uh, you can uh, probably in, in most typical environments you you find four or six Zainab virtual machines per physical machine. So your failure domain in case of an OS or an application level error is much smaller. You reduce the uh, the risk in, in, in that sense. Consolidation. Um, in the physical world, uh, a lot of organizations require physical silos. And there's, there's many, many reasons for, for those, uh, why you need those physical, uh, physical silos. Uh, number one is to, to be able to isolate demanding applications. Um, you can only do that by installing a very resource intensive application on a different physical host than your standard line of business applications. It's also a way of handling conflicting applications like multiple um, versions of Office. You'll need to install Office uh, 2007 on a physical, on a different physical machine than your Office 2012, or your Office 2010, or your Office 2013 environment. There are many non-standard applications, legacy applications, that need non-standard server configurations. Um, these are typically one-offs, and they will uh, be, they will have to be managed in a uh, siloed environment. Um, there is legacy environments that need older and potentially non-supported OSs like Windows 2000 or Windows 2003 because those are still able to handle 16-bit or 32-bit applications, whereas the rest of your um, estate is already uh, standardized in 64-bit environments. And then there is, of course, development and test environments that need different physical hardware so they don't affect uh, production machines. However, the, these silos, these physical silos, definitely lead to underutilized machines. If you have a single server that is handling a, a single um, application, you can bet uh, you can bet big money on it that the CPU utilization and the storage utilization of that uh, physical machine is way under what it's uh, what it's capable of. With virtualization, you increase this density. You can group together all of these different use cases that require silos in the physical world. You can group those together. On a uh, on a hypervisor by virtualizing those Zen virtual machines, reusing the same physical hardware, and thus reusing uh, reducing the, your TCO. Better performance. Bare metal still has a few percentage points benefit of using of running physical over uh, running uh, Zen in a virtualized environment, but virtualization platforms, the newer versions of the hypervisor, have become very, very efficient. Typically, it's within a few percentage points for most applications and most workloads, especially when the host is not overcommitted. At the moment you overcommit your host, which is a bad thing to do in a Zenith environment anyway, you will see uh, some more um, negative impact of, of your hypervisor. But if you use the correct sizing and, uh, and have enough resources available for your virtual Zenith virtual machines, uh, you will uh, hardly see any uh, impact of the virtualization layer on your Zen app, uh, virtual machines and on the applications. Virtualization also allows you to add additional tools to add uh, software solutions like Atlantis Ilio to your uh, deployment. Atlantis Ilio, which I will cover in, in greater detail, will optimize the storage use, uh, the, the use of storage. But you can also, like I mentioned before, use your NVIDIA grid to speed up the, um, the handling of uh, very graphic intensive applications and gives you more control over the number of users per GPU. And then the last reason to virtualize your ZenApp environment is uh, simplified automation and management. Right? Most companies already virtualize any new server workload or any new application by default. Right? As the foundation to building a software defined data center, uh, the goal is to drive out limited uh, resource uses due to the service hosts on, 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 on physical machines. Right? Like I explained, if you have physical silos, your resource utilization will be lower than what you can achieve with a, with a virtual, in a virtualized environment. Having virtualized environments also allows for a faster deployment of the Citrix Zen app. In the end, um, having a standard image and having uh, more automated ways of deploying Zen app, it just reduces the risk, it reduces the cost of deploying Zen app especially during a migration of an older version of Zenith to a newer supported version of Zenith. 
like I mentioned before, the, the, the blog by, by Andy Gilwood goes into a lot more detail, so I definitely encourage you to read the blog uh, when you have a minute. However, there are a few um, um, challenges when you start virtualizing your, your uh, ZenNet environment. Let me uh, spend a minute and explain a little bit about that. About 85% of the ZenApp deployments in the field today are implemented uses, using Citrix DVS. This is a network screening technology that makes it possible to use a single Windows Server image as your ZenApp base image. This single image is screened to many, many physical machines or many virtual machines at the same time. They're all using the same image, allowing you to up, make updates to that single image in the, in the central location, test it out really quickly, and then push it out to many, many servers at the, at the same time. Since this single image is read-only, the Windows Server OS will need a place to write its data, even if this trans, transient or, or temporary data, such as the page file or the application temporary files. PBS stores this temporary data into a piece of storage that they call the write cache. The write cache is very susceptible to uh, to changes at the moment you um, uh, in, uh, at the moment you upgrade, for instance, at the moment you upgrade your application, it might be that your write cache size needs to grow to be able to handle the extra writes, the extra files that the newer version of your of your application is storing. In most physical environments, this write cache is stored on local storage, and that's that's the case. It has been the case for for many many years. However, at the moment you virtualize. Uh, your ZenApp environment, you will need to uh, place this write cache on some piece of shared storage, on some piece of central SAN NAS storage, to be able to move that ZenApp virtual machine around. Right? It needs to be able to uh, to be able to continue to access the write cache, so you cannot just store it on on on, uh, on local storage. Um, the the write cache typically has very high performance requirements from your storage. You can think about it as um, as a uh, optimized piece of, of, of storage where you write your um, your temporary files, like the page files and so on. But for many many ZenApp environments, you will need uh, somewhere between two to eight IOPS uh, per ZenApp user uh, from a storage uh, performance um, um, perspective. So if at the moment you virtualize your ZenApp and you store a lot of these write cache storage pieces on a uh, shared storage resource like a, a storage array, you might run into a bottleneck um, at the storage level. Um, so there's, there's definitely some, some deployment risks around uh, the sizing of this, of this storage for the, for the write cache, as well as for the, uh, the capacity, um, uh, guessing how much storage you will need for the PBS write cache. Like I explained, if you upgrade, uh, say you upgrade your, your Office environment from Office 2010 to Office 2013, you might run out of storage space. You will have to uh, purchase more storage, add additional risk to your deployment. So cost and complexity is def definitely a factor there too, right? If you need to, if you, while you are migrating your, your Xena virtual, virtual environment and you only then you notice that you will need more storage, you have the chance of running into unexpected costs. Your CFO will not be happy and your, uh, your deployment time will take longer as well. User experience, like I explained, if you put the write cache on, on shared storage, you might introduce a, a bottleneck at that shared storage level. Right? At the moment, uh, the write cache access is slower than it used to be. Your application performance, the access to your applications and the access to your data will go down. It will slow down drastically. So at the moment you virtualize, you might run into a performance problem, which might increase help desk calls as well. By adding the requirement of uh, shared storage for your ZenApp environment, you're also adding, um, adding scale, right? You need to add uh, a, a very scalable um, storage network to be able to store your write cache on, on shared storage. So complex to scale, complex to size, complex to manage. So associated with these, um, these risks, there are some very good causes, some historical causes of project failures at the moment you virtualize your ZenApp environment. Like I explained, your, the, the sizing of your PVS write cache, it's an art. Right? So if you do it wrong, 
there is a huge risk. There is a huge risk your project will fail. It will grow with new and updated applications. It will grow when you add more users to your environment, and this leads to cost overruns. Poor performance. Right? If you undersize your storage, you will have a slow log on time. People will be will have to wait multiple multiple minutes for their applications to to load, uh, for their sessions to load, to log in, and so on. And people will complain about the slow application performance. They will call up the help desk and say, "Hey, once again, my session has frozen, or once again, this application doesn't do what I want to do." And then there's the inability to scale. Remember, I explained that when you're moving from Windows Server 2003 to a newer OS, you're doubling your IOPS requirements. This has uh, immediate impact on how you size your environment, how you scale your environment, how much storage you need to purchase um, for your uh, virtualized ZenApp environment. So with Advanced Ilio, um, we address a lot of these risks. Advanced Ilio is a 100% software solution that optimizes the storage that is used uh, for your ZenApp environment. And we can do that in a, in a, in a few, uh, in, in multiple ways. We can completely eliminate the storage by storing the write cache into server memory. Basically, we create a very optimized uh, RAM disk out of server memory. We present it as a uh, regular NFS or iSCSI data store to the, uh, to the host, and you can place your write cache into, directly into server memory. Or we can optimize uh, the way the write cache interacts with your regular storage whether that's local SSD or sh shared SAN NAS, um, and that Zilio optimizes everything. Right. So we, uh, by optimizing the storage uh, for your PBS environment or for your ZenApp environments, we address those PBS write test sizing and growth risks. Um, because we are doing a lot of storage optimization that is in line between the ZenApp um, workloads and your storage, we actually reduce uh, the amount of storage that you need, both in terms of uh, capex, both in terms of um, capacity, as well as in, in terms of performance. So this leads to lower and more controlled deployment costs. User experience, because we optimize storage and because we can run out of server memory, we can run ZenApp sessions at the speed of memory. So your user experience is very, very good. It will be very, it will be much more consistent than when dealing with uh, shared with the bottlenecks of, of a shared SAN NAS storage. In turn, this um, reduces the number of help disk calls as well. And I have a good example coming up on that. And then scale. At the moment, you're, um, you're introducing Adventus Ilio, which is a 100% software solution into your environment. Your deployment becomes a lot more flexible. If I can eliminate any storage for, for your PVS write cache, but um, but be able to provision it out of server memory and out of um, the Advanced Zilio software, I can script, I can uh, automate your deployment a lot easier. So it becomes a lot easier to scale, it becomes a lot, a lot more uh, manageable to scale. So all in all, it, it adds uh, a lot of flexibility to your Zen app uh, virtualized um, um, environments while addressing all the risks that you would run into at the moment you uh, start virtualizing your Zen app environment. So let me go into a few, uh, into a little bit more detail of these of these points. First, I want to talk about how we help you de-risk these projects. Right. Um, the the sales organization and the SD organization at at Ventus Ilio are experts at at, at virtualizing ZenApp, at deploying desktop virtualization, both on, from VDI as well as ZenApp environments. We have years and years and years of experience, of experience uh, with deploying some of the largest VDI and ZenApp deployments in, in the world. Uh, one of the largest ones is a customer with about 100,000 desktops uh, running all with our uh, Atlantis Ilio uh, technology. So lots of um, standards, reference architectures, lots of best practices around uh, we have developed around VDI as well as ZenApp. Because Advancilio is, is a 100% software solution, we um, allow you to um, uh, deploy your ZenApp environment a lot faster as well. We can provision thousands of ZenApp sessions in, in, in the matter of minutes, um, and I'll go into more detail on that. Uh, we have provisioning uh, capabilities that allow you, or that, uh, um, uh, that allow you to create new ZenApp virtual machine instances, full clones, in a matter of seconds. 
And then we have a um, enterprise um, scale management solution that we call Atlantis Ilio Center uh, to, um, to manage all Zanet estate in your data centers around the world. And we lower your um, operational costs, right? Through automation, through uh, scripting, through software only, we remove, we remove a lot of the human errors that typically um, are present at the moment you're dealing with the physical environment. We reduce your storage networking bottlenecks, and it's all in all, it becomes a lot easier to operationalize your virtualized Zanet environment with the tools and the expertise that we have developed over the last 10 years. So the deployment risks. I talked about the previous write catch already, right? So at the moment, I have a working environment. Say a, I have a, a very well-sized environment where we're running Office 2010. Uh, previous write catch is typed correctly. Everything works correctly. It's fast. Nobody is complaining and so on. But I'm upgrading to Office 2010 Server Spec 1. I had over-provisioned my PBS write cache size a little bit already, just enough to be able to absorb the extra space and the extra performance that this service spec requires. However, business requires now that I'm growing to, that I need to upgrade to Office 2013. And at that point in time, I don't have the capacity or I don't have the performance for my PBS write cache storage to handle to absorb that Office 2013 um, upgrade. So what happens? Your Zenap virtual machines will blue screen. You're running out of room, and typical Windows behavior is whenever it cannot do what it wants to do, it blue screens. Right? So this introduces a risk to your environment, a risk to your Zenap deployments. To handle that, to, uh, to uh, mitigate this risk, to mitigate these errors, what you need to do is to buy more storage. Right? So you're introducing delays, you're introducing extra cost to your Zenap environment. With Atlantis Ilio, you can store these write caches in a very optimized way straight into server RAM. Typical um, optimization ratios that we see for the PBS write cache are around 80 to 90 percent. So we reduce the size, we reduce the performance requirements for the PBS write cache by 80 to 90 percent. So this means you can just store it in server RAM. A lot easier to deploy, a lot easier to manage and a lot faster for your, uh, for your user sessions as well. Cost and complexity. Without Atlantis Ilio, if you virtualize your Zen app, you will need to purchase uh, a large amount of shared storage, whether it's SAN, whether it's NAS, whether it's a flash array. There are high costs um, associated with the purchase of this uh, storage both in terms of CapEx as well as OpEx. You need to manage that storage in the end. Um, with Atlantis Ilio, we can either completely eliminate the purchase of that storage by adding a little bit of extra memory to each server, or we allow you to uh, reduce uh, the storage requirements. We can still optimize storage, whether that's local storage or whether that's central storage for your PBS write cache as well. So you already have an array that you want to use. We definitely allow you to do that. Um, it, it reduces the requirements from a storage networking perspective as well. Right? Less, uh, less BP um, storage switches, less BP um, HBAs, things like that. And with at, at Atlantis Ilio, and because we reduce the wait times if we're, um, if we're virtualizing and if we're optimizing storage, we actually see density improvements of about 20% as well. So if you look at it from a cost perspective, there is definitely a, uh, a very tangible um, a benefit here, right? A, because we're running, uh, we're running straight from memory, we're using server RAM as primary storage, we boost the performance of your Zenith environments very, very significantly. Right? There's pretty much unlimited IOPS that you're getting from RAM, um, especially compared to uh, shared stand, stand, stand mass storage. Because we are eliminating or reducing your uh, storage so much, you see a very tangible um, storage savings as well. Very typical um, savings that we see at customers, and I'm doing a lot of PCO analysis for most of the customers. We see somewhere between 60, 70, and in some cases even 80% of storage savings, uh, both in terms of capex as well as OPEX. So what does that mean? It directly means that the cost per desktop reduces quite significantly as well. In the example on the screen, we uh, reduce the cost per desktop. 
from a, from about three hundred dollars to about one hundred and twenty dollars. That is sixty percent of capex savings or capex and opex savings that you can keep in your pocket. Important to point out that the capex um, analysis on the screen over here um, is for servers, storage, and Atlantis Ilio uh, licensing costs. We don't um, include things like the Windows Server OS licensing or or even the Citrix Gen App licensing because that's the same on, on either side of the picture. User experience, right? If we're using in-memory storage, if we're using RAM as primary storage, the uh, application performance goes up quite significantly as well. We have a customer that um, had a lot of problems with their Zenith environments. They tracked the, the number of help desk calls over the months, and they saw a huge increase going from about 200 to, to more than 400 help desk calls in just three months. And in April, they needed to, uh, they were uh, acquiring a different company. So they were growing their Zen App estate by another 20 or 25 percent. So they were basically up in arms and saying, what, what do we need to do with our Zen App environment? They installed Adventus Ilio. They basically eliminated any, um, any storage from their environment because they were running Adventus Ilio straight from server RAM. And look what happened. The help desk calls got reduced by about 70 percent. People were not complaining about frozen applications or, or frozen sessions anymore. People were a lot happier, and this was with that 20 or 25 percent increase in, in user density. Right. So, just like with VDI, storage performance really matters in a Zen app environment as well. Right. If you undersize your storage, if you don't provide enough storage performance to your VDI or your Zen app environment, everything will slow down. So, in, in the little table on the left. We have measured for the typical uh, VDI and Zen app deployments. If they, if you undersize your storage, or if you only give it two or four or eight IOPS per session, what it would take, how long it would take to do some very common tasks, right? If you have an environment that is um, 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 sized at eight IOPS per desktop, your boot times and your boot your um, your boot windows times and your login times will be very very long. And just launching an application will take a long time as well. It might take up to a minute just to launch Outlook or Word or Excel, and people do that every day, all day long, right? At the moment, you start um, giving an environment as many IOPS as a physical PC, somewhere around 80 to 120 IOPS, or even better than PC, or even PC with SSD speeds, then you're starting to see this ex uh, exceptional uh, user experience. Things happen really fast, like logins and application times and so on. So IOPS really do matter when you're virtualizing your Xenon environment as well as, as well as when you're doing VDI. So this is some storage graphs of the customer that I was just talking about, about the help desk calls. We actually tracked the number of IOPS that they were seeing in their Xenon environment. So the, the graph on the left over here is the, the, uh, the storage performance that was measured at the storage. They were seeing an average of 18 IOPS per Zen app session between 9 and 6 p.m., 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. This is way more than the Citrix recommended um, uh, standards of somewhere between 2 to 8 IOPS per, per uh, Zen app session. The peak, right before they went home, they saw a peak of about 32 IOPS. 32 IOPS, that is, that is probably more than what most uh, VDI uh, environments are sized at today. So this had a direct effect of, of about uh, on the number of SAN disks that was required for their Zenith environment as well. Right. They had a combination of RAID 5 uh, 50K drives as well as some uh, RAID 10 50K drives, and they needed about 200 to 250 drives during the day. After they um, deployed Adventus Ilio, they didn't need any storage anymore. They could completely repurpose their, um, their, their SAN storage for different workloads like SQL Server and so on. They completely eliminated any storage um, effect of, the, of their Zen effort state on their shared storage that they had. So everybody was a lot happier. Other benefits, of course, because of um, optimization and so on, we reduced the size of your write cache quite a bit, quite significantly as well. Um, these are some, some sample stats that we got from some customers. We reduced the storage requirement per server 
from about 240 gigabytes for right cat size to about 19 gigabytes. Okay. And just some graphs around provisioning time and boot times as well. Re reduce uh, provisioning time of a full ZenApp clone from about 40 minutes to about three minutes with us. Boot times are reduced by about as much as, as well. Flexibility and scalability. Right? Without Atlantis Zillio, you will need to buy a lot of storage. I explained the, the, the storage increases when you're operating your, uh, your applications and so on. A lot of storage, you need a fiber channel switches or you need um, iSCSI switches and so on. Or if you're using local SSDs, you're managing a lot of what we call islands of risk, right? Each and every server has a little bit of storage. Each, if, if that storage fails, you need to open up the, so uh, the server, you need to pull out the SSD and push back in a new SSD, so there's a lot of OPEX operational costs um, associated with that. With us, you're just using server RAM, which is probably one of the most uh, durable pieces of your PC, right? When it's the last time you saw, you saw RAM fail. Um, so it's a lot easier to maintain everything is 100% software. And because everything is 100% software, we have uh, some very tangible benefits in terms of automation and provisioning as well. We have a tool, what we call deployment services, that allows you to install Atlantis Elio at multiple servers in your data center within the matter of minutes. We configure everything for you, set up the networking, even set up the data stores for you automatically. So you can use those data stores after deployment services finish, finishes as your PBS white cache. Um, we, Atlantis Elio also, also has the capability, what we call FastCon. This allows you to create new Xena virtual machines in as little as, as five seconds. Because we are software and because we basically have inline duplication, we can make something look like a new uh, version of a file very quickly. And all of this, of course, integrates with existing management and provisioning systems. We have very powerful APIs that you can use to tie in the provisioning of Ilio or, or new Xena virtual machines into your existing environment. This also has the benefit that you can build up high availability and disaster recovery plans really quickly. We can, you can provide uh, business continuity in case a disaster is coming or if a disaster has happened by provisioning, by basically using this, these automation tools, by reprovisioning your environment in any, desk, or in any data center around, around the world in a matter of hours or days. Right? You can use virtualization. You can use any server or any storage or no, no storage at all to reprovision your ZenApp de de deployment, completely automated, completely tested in any data center around the world. Very, very powerful. A few words on um, one of our um, uh, customers that we've helped migrate from a, um, an old Windows XP environment. They have 16,000 employees. They were all running Windows XP. And they're mig migrating them at the moment to a shared environment, to a mixed environment of about 9,000 Xeno sessions, as well as 1,000 PDI sessions. They were able to say, by, by, by utilizing Atlantis Ilio and the benefits that we provide, they were able to save about four and a half million in storage and server costs. They're achieving better, better user experience that they were able to do with their Windows uh, XP environments. They um, reduced boot and login times by about four X, and they saw about a 20% session increase. So very tangible benefits of using Ilio in a Zenit environment. We also accelerated the deal because they didn't have to purchase any storage. So um, pr uh, the procurement of your servers was a lot faster. The deployment is a lot faster because everything is automated. <laughs> so let me talk a few minutes about the technology behind it, let's Celia. Let's talk about how it actually works. So like I said before, Atlantis Celio is, is a 100% software solution. We install as a virtual machine on the hypervisor where your Zen app sessions are running. And we look like, we smell like, we feel like a regular um, iSCSI or NFS data store. So the hypervisor thinks it's dealing with regular storage, but it's actually dealing with us. And then Zillio provides optimized access to either your server RAM or any storage that you already have in use, whether that's NFS, iSCSI, private channel, local disk, we don't really care. And because we do a lot of storage optimization within our virtual machine, we can um, decrease the, the storage performance 
the graph on the left, the, the, the graph in blue, is the typical IOPS that are coming out of a, out of a ZNAT or a VDI environment. What we send to storage is reduced by about 80, 90, 95 percent. Right? So we, we send a much friendlier storage workload to, to either your storage or we make, can make use of server RAM. We have a bunch of uh, patents around this. We actually got awarded two patents just in the, in the last few months around inline deduplication around uh, in, memory, in memory storage optimization. And we have a bunch more patents that are, in, uh, that are pending that basically help us uh, um, optimize any storage workload. So how does this look in a, in a PBS environment? Basically, you have the PBS server that is streaming that this single image, the single ZNAT image, to multiple Windows Server 2012 virtual machines. Right? Each of these server uh, images has has a small piece of storage where they can store all the writes, called the PBS write cache. And you configure PBS to store the write cache into the data store that Atlantis Ilio provides. And the only thing we need for that is a little bit of server RAM. Right? Say we take. 50 gigs of server RAM, we make that look as a terabyte of storage to the hypervisor. So that's why you that's why you store your PBS write caches. And because everything is local on the server, you don't have to traverse the storage network. Everything stays within the box. Everything is super, super fast. A little bit more around PBS write cache. The typical size, and this, this is data that we've gotten from, uh, from Citrix, from one of the Citrix blogs, is that the typical size for your write cache is somewhere between 15 to 20 gigabytes of write cache. Right? And um, they recommend somewhere around eight IOPS per user for, for heavy users. But we have very concrete user data or customer data that shows a multiple increase of the number of IOPS that actually is required from a, from a Zenab environment. So we recommend you to size up to maybe 30 IOPS per, 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 uh, per user. So the, to store this on regular storage, you would need a lot of storage. You would need uh, lots of capacity in terms of 20 gigs per Zen average machine and a lot of uh, performance in terms of 30 IOPS per customer. Right? With Ilio, we store these in, in memory. We have very high optimization rates. I've, I've typically seen around 90%. We neutralize this PBS write cache growth. We allow you to oversize your PBS write cache growth because we, if you don't use it, we optimize it down to zero anyway. So why not use double? Why not size your PBS write cache at double what you need or even triple what you need? We optimize away what you don't need. Right. So you can absorb any new applications, any upgrades that uh, that that you might have to put um, into your environment in the future. We avoid those the, those those pesky Windows blue screens of that. And we address any sizing mis mistakes through, through our optimization. So all in all, a lot, of, a lot less capex and a lot less upgrades. It also means, by utilizing server memory rather than storage, that you can use blades for your PBS environment. Right? In a typical PBS environment, you would need a lot of local storage. So you couldn't use blades that typically are limited to, uh, to only two, two spindles. With, with Atlantis Elio, and with the use of server memory, you can put them on blades, reducing your capex, reducing your management overhead. Right. So summarizing, we have about 15 minutes left, and I want to see if there's any questions on the phone. Summarizing really quickly, right? virtualizing Zenap gives you the, the, the increased flexibility. With using Atlantis Elio, we allow you to eliminate any storage or the use of SSDs. We have in-memory storage capabilities. So faster provisioning times, faster boot times, faster login times, exceptionally fast applications. We neutralize any of this PBS write cache growth, so you can avoid um, having to spend extra money on purchasing more storage. Amazing user experience. Your applications are super, super fast. Uh, big files load very fast. It's, it's really a pleasure to use. And then we have. Um, very advanced automation capabilities allow you to deploy faster, um, grow your estate quicker, and we reduce risks uh, but by eliminating the humor errors. And all of this with 100% software solution, really the first truly defined software defined storage platform. I'll leave uh, this screen up while we're, uh, while we're handling uh, some of the questions if there are any. 
Um, we have some um, some solution briefs and some uh, product pages available. We have a very extensive best practices guide available as well. Um, our blogs are very uh, frequently updated by uh, some of our Citrix FDs who also are Citrix technology professionals. We have um, actually four of the CTPs uh, working for us today, which is the, we are the company with the most uh, CTPs uh, working for, for any, any single company at the moment. Very proud of that. And then um, just last week we uh, received uh, the Citrix Ready certification for Atlantis Ilio for Zen F7.5 as well. Um, so you can deploy um, Ilio and be um, assured that we're fully, fully compatible with, uh, with uh, Citrix Zen F. Gary, turning it over back to you and see if there's any questions on the line. Um, so we just had a question come in. How is Ilio licensed? What is the minimum required number of licenses? Ballpark figures we're talking. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a very good question. So um, we have two different licensing models for uh, Atlantis Ilio for Zen app. Um, first and foremost, most of our uh, licenses that we saw is, oh, <coughs> excuse me, is on a per, per host basis. We, um, we allow you to buy a, uh, an, an, an Ilio license for any so uh, two socket server um, um, deployments. So if you have a two socket server that you use for Zen app, you buy one license. If you have a four socket uh, uh, machine, you buy two licenses. This price for um, Zenapp, we have two versions of Zenapp. We have a lower end version that does not come with the, uh, the automation tools. It allows you to run in memory only. It's, uh, the list price for that is $2,500 per two sockets. And then the enterprise version that has the automation tools and that allows you to optimize regular storage as well is $5,000 per, per, uh, per license. Um, also, we have a per user uh, license price as well. So if you have a mixed, mixed VDI and Zenith environment, we typically use the per-user um, Zenith environment just to make the, the licensing easier. Okay. Um, our next question is, Is are there any requirements for application virtualization on Atlantis Ilio? So the requirements for us are, are the, the same requirements as for virtualizing any Zenith environment, right? We support all three major hypervisors. Um, so you can in, you can use um, Hyper-V, Zen Server, and VMware ESX with us, um, same as, as what you can use with, uh, with Citrix Zen App. Uh, we support any version of Citrix Zen App going back all the way to, uh, to Zen App uh, 4.5, I believe, even though it's, it's out of service. Um, we have customers that have already upgraded to, uh, to Zen App 7.1 and 7.5. Uh, so yeah, from a compatibility perspective, uh, we're uh, just as well um, represented as, uh, as Zen App itself. Um, are licenses renewed each year or paid once at the start? Um, our licenses are uh, are perpetual, uh, so you buy you buy the license uh, once. After that, of course, you uh, you pay yearly for for maintenance and support. Uh, this typically uh, gives you access to upgrades, uh, support, and uh, any upgrades. So any uh, any version upgrades are, are covered uh, under our maintenance and support uh, licensing costs. What are the differences between Atlantis Ilio and Nutanix's offering? That's a very good question. So Nutanix has uh, what they call a hyper-converged uh, solution. Um, you have to buy their hardware and you're tied to their hardware. You basically have to do a forklift um, um, replacement of your existing server estate with the Nutanix um, estate. Nutanix has the benefit of, of uh, what they call a benefit of um, shipping or purchasing um, servers as well as storage at the same time. But what we see in practice is that you either need more servers or you need more storage. It it's never goes really hand in hand. So either your service is underutilized or your storage is underutilized with Nutanix. Atlantis Ilio is 100% is software and like I just said, we support any hypervisor, any storage, and any server. You can install it as a virtual machine and we will run in any environment. So a lot, a lot easier, a lot more flexibility um, deploying at Ilio than with Nutanix. Um, our next question is, is, can you explain the differences between vSAN and Ilio and also ZenF and USX? Yeah, I will, I will, I can, I can talk about that as well. So vSAN uh, just came out, um, uh, storage technology from, from VMware. 
um, very interesting uh, technology. It allows you to basically pool um, local flash, local SSDs, and local spinning disks together into a, uh, a pool of storage. Um, the uh, hardware that you need for vSAN is at the moment very limited. Um, there's only a few hard disks and a few flash devices that, that you can use with vSAN. It still is, um, it still is a uh, hardware solution, whereas Advanced Ilio, you can just store uh, your ZenApp storage into server memory. Um, we can just use a little bit of your server memory and use that rather than having to maintain and uh, install extra storage hardware. Um, that said, Advanced Ilio can optimize uh, these and storage as well. But in the end, it's just another storage um, storage array or storage provider, and you can use Atlantis Ilio to optimize these uh, We actually have a solution brief out where we uh, show a IOPS increase of about 5x and a capacity increase, I believe, of, of, of 5x as well. So you can scale your VSense storage a lot further. Um, the difference between, I believe, between Ilio and USX? Uh, Ilio and Ilio for ZenApp and USX. So Ilio for ZenApp is optimized for the, the ZenApp workload, right? We, we've tweaked our optimization um, algorithms to optimize ZenApp to be able to handle those PBS write caches really, really efficiently. Atlantis Ilio USX is a um, general storage platform. It's based on the same engine, but it's, it's optimized for the generic server workloads. You'll need, um, with, with USX basically what we do is we also pool resources we allow you to pull local memory, local storage, as well as your enterprise storage into um, into abstract pools of storage, and you can uh, run regular workloads on that. Um, for instance, Microsoft SQL Server, Exchange, SharePoint, um, USX is optimized for those server workloads, whereas Ilio for ZenApp is optimized for Ilio for, for ZenApp and for Microsoft RDS. Okay, so that was all the questions we have for today. Again, you should be receiving a follow-up email on Monday with a copy of today's recorded presentation. I'd like to thank all the attendees for making time uh, for our presentation today and for your questions. We hope you enjoyed the webinar. And we hope to